Hi guys, my name is Girish Belly, your host for today for Back to Basics, another Back to Basics on a Friday. So today we have a guest regarding about coaching. No, not football coaching, not cricket uh, sports, none of that. It's actually business coaching. So we'll talk about the details about that and what this company is all about. The company name is TESOL. Well, what does TESOL mean? Well, we'll get into that basics also. And today we have a director and a founder uh, of the TESOL. So let's warm welcome my guest today. So how are you doing today? Thank you for coming on my show. Hi, Girish. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast. And I'm really excited for our conversation. Thank you so much. So the first thing is first, before we get into that, let's let's pronounce your name properly, because I'm pretty sure we're going to butcher the name, pro you know, uh, so let's <laughs> let's talk about that first. Yeah, so um, it's Arunanjali Maria. Uh huh. And uh, Arunanjali is my first name, Maria, contrary to common belief, is my family name. And, um, you know, I'm an Indian. And even as an Indian, Arunanjali is probably the most complicated uh, uh, name. So even Indians find it difficult to uh, pronounce it. So uh, here it is Arun, Anjali, and, you know, the moment somebody says, okay, you know, I'm going to have a little problem pronouncing this name. I know that's going to be mine. So the moment they say, oh, that's me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so thank you for coming on the show. The, before we get into all the basics of all the other details of the show, what does back to basic mean to you? Yeah. Um, I think it means lots of things. It's very meaningful and it has different meanings at different points uh, in time. So if I were to just connect it back to my life, uh, giving one instance is um, I'm an ex-banker and uh, I did different roles while I was in the bank and I could have just continued in doing more of the same. And so I'm going to steal your phrase here and say that, you know, the back to basic moment for me then was that I asked myself that in all of this what is it that I love the most? Where is it that I have been able to create maximum value? And what are the skills that I have? And, you know, the intersection, as the Japanese call it, the ikigai. Mm -hmm. For me, that was a back to basic moment when I realized that, you know what? In all of this, I have really enjoyed working with people and to ignite that human spark in people. So my work today is to be an enabler, to build capabilities through my training and coaching and to enable others to thrive. And that Girish is core to everything that I do personally and as a, a corporate entity. Yeah, so I mean, uh, thank you for that. Uh, the reason why I invited you into this show um, I was listening to other interviews that you have done, and it looks like uh, there are complex issues in business world. And what mm -hmm. you try to do with your tools and your expertise that you are doing, you make that into a simpler term. And that's mm -hmm. where my back to basic moment comes in for you. So uh, I thank you for coming on my show on that. Thank you. Uh, I'm so, excited. Yeah. So. So let's talk about the, the name of the company. So mm. it's called TESOL, mm. but the, the first name is very, uh, very cool. So because people, they don't know the, what the detail is about that, right? So let's talk about that. You know, I love the adjective that you use to say it's cool. That's the first one for me um, being called uh, cool. Yeah. So. Um, Working with the learning and development uh, team of uh, the company where I was working, I enjoy that experience so much that I just felt this was my calling. And uh, two of my colleagues and I, we decided to come together to form uh, our company, Twameva Solutions. 
So uh, this was back in 2010. And the word Tvameva is a Sanskrit word, which means only you. And uh, so true to that name, we curate very bespoke solutions unique to every client's needs and uh, helping them build internal capabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so one of the things that we realized very quickly is that, you know, people go for a oh. training program. They come back very excited. But how are you able to really create uh, behavioral change and long-term sustainable mm -hmm. behavioral change? So we have these two business verticals, training and coaching. And so our work in the area of training focuses on business storytelling, future human skills, behavior, skill development, et cetera. And um, as an executive coach, we work with clients to enable them to break through their self-imposed limitations and thrive through uncertain times. Mm -hmm. So our big, hairy, audacious goal is truly bringing humanity to the workplace where organizations create happy and safe places for people to grow and find meaning. And uh, there's another secret uh, behind uh, Thuameva, uh, which is, um, you know, the three founding partners for uh, Thuameva are, you know, Arunanjali with an A, uh, and there is Vidya with a V, and there is Neeta with an M. Mm. So we were looking for a name which has V, A, and M. Mm. And uh, there were many uh, choices, options, etc. And uh, this is the one that we came up with, which, uh, you know, was universally and unanimously liked by all of us. So, so the way I look at it is that uh, the name that you brought to your foundation and to your company, right? Uh, you wanted a simple and something meaningful at the same time. Like mine yes. is back to basics. Yours is Tomeva, you know, and, yeah. and you want to make it as simple as possible. And, yes. and, and I think that's what your company stands for. Only you, only simple. Only you, which is that, you know, every uh, learning solution that we design and curate for a client is very, very uniquely uh, based on clients' unique needs. So there's a lot of deep research that we do with clients to understand their challenges, uh, expectations, profile of participants. And then we co-create the content along with the clients so that we are able to establish relevance and there is practical uh, learning that they can go back and apply to solve a very specific business problem. And uh, that's why um, Tuameva, because Tuameva is about uh, keeping the customer, the client at the heart and center of every offering that we uh, design for the client. So, so, so let's talk about the basics of this, right? So when we say coaching, we're not talking about football. We're not talking soccer. We're not talking anything else. We're talking about business coaching. Mm. But when we think of business coaching, we think, that someone's going to come to my room and going to mm. train me. So basically, there's a difference between coaching and training. So can you explain that, please? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for this um, uh, question, actually. Um, because like I said, these are our two primary uh, business verticals, training and coaching. Mm -hmm. And I want to um, attempt to answer this question by first addressing how the two are different. So training is offered to a group of people to share knowledge, build skills, and it's therefore more of a tell experience. And of course, just telling is not enough. It establishes uh, how is it relevant to the audience back at their workplaces. It's participative, it's interactive. So therefore, in a classroom session or these days, you know, while we're doing a lot of Zoom training, yeah. there is a lot of peer learning uh, there's, you know, participants are able to simulate a workplace environment. There's a lot of practice and application so that there is uh, learning and awareness that is established. Hmm. The training that we do is exclusively in the area of soft skills, which today is believed to be the hard skill. Yeah. 
and um, we don't do training in the area of uh, domain or technical training. Mm -hmm. So some examples of trainings uh, that we offer is um, personal branding, executive presence, business storytelling, future skills, leadership, presentation, networking, etc. Now, coaching is primarily an exclusive one on one uh, process, though, of course, you know, there is also group coaching and team coaching. And the focus of coaching is on a behavior change and it follows the process of inquiry where the coach asks provocative exploratory questions for the coachee to reflect and make a shift in their thinking, decision making and behavior. Mm -hmm. So at Twameva, we offer both coaching and training, like I mentioned to you before, and uh, and there's also an area where the two converge for us. For example, after training, how do you ensure that there is application back at work? Like I said, training is a great uh, environment to create awareness and learning. And a training session alone will not ensure that there is application or behavioral change. Yeah. And, you know, Girish, you and I both know that to form a habit, it requires deliberate practice and application that's right yeah and um, so coaching is that continued interaction process post the training mm. for driving results since we are talking about you know business coaching uh, training is training and coaching is combined in the sense that training offers the skill building and coaching ensures that there is a behavior change so how do you know the difference when someone tries to give you a scenario? How, how does how does one get trained to do this? I mean, uh, I guess you are certified uh, to do this. OK, but but I think there must be something it triggers you that this is training versus coaching. That's right. So um, if one is looking for a skill building, one is looking for a large group intervention, mm -hmm. it is in the area of training. Mm. Um, if it is uh, more about behavior change, uh, if it is one-on-one, um, -on -one, then it's largely in the area of uh, coaching. Mm -hmm. So if I had a, uh, a complex uh, issue and I have to go on stage and speak, is that considered a problem or is that considered a, I don't know, anxiety uh, within me or what, what do you, or fear of people making fun of me while I'm speaking or what do you think? So that's, that's another great question, Girish. Um, you know, when we would do coaching, like I mentioned, there's a very deep exploratory uh, intervention. Mm -hmm. So which means it could be a combination of a mindset mm -hmm. uh, issue, which, you know, could be um, anxiety, fear. Um, it could be maybe the skill how do you make presentations? It could be a combination of both. So one part of it could be that I don't know how to present, which is more the skill base that you learn the presentation skills. Mm -hmm. The second part of it is that I have fear to go up on stage and present, which is uh, understanding through questions and through reflection mm -hmm. to understand that where is it that this fear lies mm -hmm. what is it that's stopping you from being this bold and brave and courageous uh, high power presenter you know, and therefore what needs to be resolved for you to be able to overcome that you know that uh, brings up a good point when you said bold right um so when I started this podcast, people were saying that you are very bold on getting on on the platform and speak mm. your mind or speak with people. Uh, it takes courage to do that. So not yeah. a lot of people are uh, 
uh, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Daredevil. Uh, mm. You know, if you think about it, that is the word that we should be looking at. We mm. are all, we, you and me are daredevil people coming online, speaking to each other and talking about people, talking about issues that we mm. want to talk about. Mm. So, Aruna, so tell me what tools do you use? Is there a certain tool that you use? Is there a method that you use? Yeah, yeah. So coaching, like I was mentioning, is a collective think is collective thinking, where the coach asks questions so that the coachee experiences self discovery, uh, and the coach acts as a mirror to the coachee. Mm -hmm. For example, this one time um, I had an experience where I just asked two questions. And the coachy shared with me uh, her experiences in the past, uh, her challenges for the next 25 to 30 minutes. And at the end of it, I only reflected back by making one question and one statement with her. And so the coach is really your thinking partner, someone who creates a very safe place that's free of judgment to support the coachee to realize their goals. In fact, uh, another example that comes to my mind is, uh, you know, someone that I was coaching to address uh, teenage issues uh, with their son. And at the end of it, they said, you know what I was noticing, you didn't seem horrified by some of the shocking things that I was telling you. And so, yes, to your question, one doesn't need to be an expert in the area of parenting. I'm definitely not. One doesn't need to be an expert, uh, you know, with teenage kids. I'm not. However, the coach is required and trained to be definitely an expert at asking questions hmm. and a listener. So not a subject matter expert otherwise. So basically so, you're saying don't don't react but listen. Yes. And listen to learn and understand uh, the coachee and the person in front of you better. Hmm. Uh, really get into their realm and their ecosystem and world. So um you know to your question a coach creates a space to stretch and dare uh, the coachy in decision making. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm using your words again. This is to dare uh, so that the coach, coachy can therefore have greater clarity, uh, decision making, and action. And most importantly, the coachy feels the courage and the confidence to raise their own bar. And that's why I like to believe, and I uh, often clarify that coaching is not one of those cozy chats that we are having, you know, either with a friend or a confidant or, you know, any of that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you and I know that today uh, organizations are valuing the power of coaching. Mm -hmm. In fact, today we are training people uh, and managers on how to become uh, coaches or uh, leaders as coaches. In fact, um, organizations are wanting to conservatively move away from the traditional feedback mechanism to creating a culture of coaching within their organizations. Okay, so I think there's a method called um, um, agile-based. Uh, so we're trying to get away from agile-based or are, what do you think, uh, the, what is a method that we're going in now? So today it's really about uh, an environment where people want to learn um, at their own time, at their own pace. Mm -hmm. uh, it's about both depth and width of learning. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I was part of the learning and development team when we used to design traditional curriculum. So let's say if you're in a sales job, you would have uh, a set of programs you need to go uh, through. That was your sales curriculum. Yeah. Today, uh, all of that is archaic. Today, it's really about, like you said, agility, curiosity. Uh, what is it that I can learn which is going to help me immediately in my work? Or definitely, 
ignite new knowledge in me, which somewhere, someday, somehow is going to uh, help me and facilitate me to apply it at work, may not be currently. So I think it's the mindsets that are changing, which is around agility, curiosity, and building those as skills and muscles for people uh, within organizations. So, so the thought process now is a little changing, but I think it's going to change in, in a little while. It's not going to be overnight uh, because it seems like I have noticed in my business world, uh, in my technology world, uh, that is that it seems like the transition is changing slowly, but it is changing. Um, I'm, I'm not sure what needs to be drastically changed, uh, but it, I'm pretty sure it'll come. So what are your, what are your plans for the next five years, according to your company and according to your coaching life? So if, you know, it's really about taking the uh, long view uh, on learning. Mm -hmm. And uh, one thing that's happening is the whole landscape of learning is not just changing. It's, it's like almost um, transforming. And when I say the landscape is changing, it's, I'm referring to one, how learning is uh, shared with employees, the pace of learning, uh, the availability of learning, um, also what or the content of learning. All of that is, is rapidly changing. So for example, earlier, you know, we would do, let's say two days of uh, a classroom sessions. Mm -hmm. Today, it's about two hours of uh, training program that we've never done in the past. For mm -hmm. example, uh, somebody that we worked with recently was around ways of working in 2021 and beyond. Uh, these days we are looking at uh, uh, work around executive presence in the online space. Mm -hmm. Now, these were not skills that existed in the past. No. One never needed to learn these. No. So today we are talking about that. Um, also, you know, for example, we are now talking about human skills and one of the reasons i mentioned earlier was about how soft skills is today become the hard skill as organizations are going the digital route ai one of the things is that it's not technology based mm -hmm. this is really about human beings and how they are going to be at the heart of all of this, leading it from the front as well as the people who, to whom this technology has to serve. Mm. So if we don't understand what people need, if we don't understand what people want uh, in the manner uh, it needs to be delivered and we don't take people along with us, it's not going to be. But I, I, I think there's, a, there's another thought process of which I think uh, you are noticing now, uh, nowadays is work personal balance. And, and I think people are, because people are working from home nowadays, right? Uh, with these, these times that we're going through. So it's, it's tough to make your work and your personal life and balance it out. How, how does that, how do you ch coach that? Because, you know, the thing is when we're at work, we're at nine to five and then we punch out at five o'clock mm. at home. We don't punch out because we just yeah. keep on going, right? So when yeah. do we stop? So how do we coach these these type of situations? Yeah, so uh, going back to something that you asked me earlier, that these days, there's a lot of focus around um, coaching for uh, people who are either returning back to work mm -hmm. or it's about working from home, you know, in the, uh, you know, so now people have been working from home, let's say for almost 30, 
uh, 12, 13, 14 months, depending on which part of the world one is. Mm. Um, and what's happened in the process is that we it's not been a linear experience. Mm -hmm. You know, at the point in time when it started, everything was haywire. You know, there was chaos. Mm -hmm. From that moment of chaos to bringing in some element of normalization mm -hmm. to actually now looking at how can we not just survive but thrive uh, having accepted that this is the environment that we are in. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning of this entire uh, time, there was really no time that anybody had for coaching or training. Mm -hmm. In fact, unfortunately, all our work uh, was cancelled. Everything was deferred. Sure. And as people started settling in, organizations were extremely compassionate uh very very empathetic to understand that what is it that will facilitate people to work from home whether it was the technology whether it was uh, the wi-fi whether it was the support system what is it that people uh, were needing mm -hmm. people took the time to understand their requirements uh, and offering uh, that support yeah i mean there are some companies that i know that they're they want to take uh once a month off okay yeah. because of the the chaos that they're going through yeah. or there are other companies which take one day off for the quarter you yeah. know and that's never i've never heard of that before yeah. uh things are uh there was another uh which was it uh summer holidays uh you know summer hours so you leave yeah. early at one o'clock or something like that that's unheard of. That's never been happening before. I, I think the mindset has changed a little from the business world. Okay. Um, uh, so I don't know if this is a good thing or a temporary thing or a permanent thing, because it looks like people are changing their minds about, uh, you know, people sitting in New York City and working and their companies in Seattle, you know, and and that's unheard of. Yeah. Usually they force the people to move to Seattle because that's where their job is. Yeah. So that's that's slowly changing. The remote uh, aspect of nowadays is changing. And yeah. then regarding what you said about, you know, network and Wi-Fi, it seems like the more and more devices you have at home, the capacity of the router goes less. So which means that you need a better router at home now before that was not the case. Uh, I'm talking from the technology point of view. So, yeah. uh, so what else is there that we have missed? I mean, it seems like we have covered everything about your business and your coaching and your training, and even the the examples of the the company and and how and what you stand for. Uh, yeah. Any last words before we head out today? Uh, I think one thing that I would um, like to uh, add is that uh, how does one measure uh, training? You know, sometimes one looks at, okay, you know, here's a training and, um, okay, I must be able to see the outcomes immediately. And we at TESOL believe that the best way to measure the return on investment on training is about creating that behavior change and uh, delivering that business impact. Mm -hmm. So uh, one of the clients that we worked uh, was a large multinational um, IT company and um, they were looking to develop their uh, leadership skills for, mm -hmm. you know, a band of uh, 50 uh, executives. And the team was very keen to measure the impact of this training program because they were looking to replicate this uh, experience across locations and levels of leadership. So uh, we covered, you know, six different competencies and we identified that what are going to be the business metrics that will be considered to measure uh, the impact at the end of the six uh, interventions. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, research tells us that it takes typically three months for any change to happen. That's right. So in order to embed the change, we followed uh, a three-way process, which is first is that in between every intervention, uh, 
people were required to uh, complete projects and the purpose of that project was to ensure that whatever had been shared with them in the training program was going to be applied back at work. The second was uh, around small group coaching and the intention behind that was that how are you going to ensure that you know there's a refresher and there is a small group peer learning so that people are able to learn from each other on the go. And the third was around 360 profile that we designed pre and post so that one could compare how those behavior changes uh, have actually uh, you know, been applied. And this resulted in uh, business metrics, uh, a change in the business metrics in a positive way. And you know, we then ran the sessions across locations and across different leadership levels. Now, you know, one can't ascribe that the reason that all, all of these uh, business metrics showed a positive trend was only because of training and coaching. But again, studies say that about 10% of business impact uh, could be uh, assigned to effective training. Hmm. So it is a process and uh, it needs, you know, um, adequate time and deliberate interventions. So there, so there's three ways of doing this. The uh, the the way uh, the people are thinking. Okay, so that's something new that I I learned uh, today. So I, I thank you for that. Um, thank you. Yeah. So and, and the other reason why I invited you also is because you're from Hong Kong, uh, and and my background is from Hong Kong also. So. Oh, uh, nice. Yeah, so you did not know that. So it, it looks like we have Le something Homa. in Nehoma. Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So thank you again for coming on my show and, and making this uh, show much uh, brighter for me and uh, very educational about uh, coaching. I did not know much about it. Uh, and now I do. Uh, so slowly, uh, I will tap on you if I have any more questions on uh, on coaching and, and you can guide me on my uh, my new podcast show. Thank you so much, Girish. It was a pleasure uh, having this conversation with you. And thank you so much for uh, giving me the opportunity to share some of my uh, work with you and your uh, audience. No, thank absolutely. You. Thank you again. And it's my honor for uh, inviting you here. Thank you again. Thank you very much. So, Bye. guys, we have uh, spoken with the, the coach today. We have spoken with uh, an amazing lady who is based out of Hong Kong, and we're in uh, New Jersey, New York uh, area, and my background's from Hong Kong also. So, as usual, as always, there is a last quote of the day, and the quote of the day, it seems like that I have actually taken away from her uh, long back. Uh, that she gave an interview somewhere else and I'm trying to find that uh, uh, quote so let's get that quote of the day so guys the quote of the day is don't use a five dollar word when a 50 cents word will do and that's by Mark Twain and she mentioned that in one of the interviews and I stole it from her so guys as usual as always you know at the end of the episode what do I say Remember, everything in life goes back to basics, and that's what we did today. We talked about coaching, and we talked about business, and we talked about everything going back to basics. Guys, take care. God bless. See you next week. Bye. Next week's episode on Back to Basics. And she was a librarian, so I spent uh, many, many a summer holidays in, li in a library and you know I think they're inexpensive and effective babysitters yeah. um, so I really got the love of reading and I think it's been a gift because um, you know you can travel with a book it's such a rich interest to have yeah. and it fulfills your life so I think uh, that's that's one thing I'd like to tell the listeners is read read uh, read as much uh, with them read in front of them uh, fill your house with books